Welcome to the Lesbo and the Bean universe. Lesbo and the Bean. L-A-T-B. Lat B. Where mixed martial arts and the UFC get silly. Big silly. Buckle up and move your tray tables to their upright position. And please, somebody shut that baby up. It's time for Lesbo and the Bean. Welcome back. Welcome back. Episode 159. Recap Ricochet. And man, what a recap do we have ahead of us. This has been the heaviest combat sports weekend we've seen in a very long time. And dare I say, I was overwhelmed at times. I was definitely didn't know what screen to look at, where to look, what bet to make. Freaking, it was just a treasure trove of combat sports all weekend long. I don't even know where to really begin. We have the Friday card to break down. Should we go in order? I like that. I don't mind that at all. I know. I don't even want to get off topic with any other news because we have so many. And we, I honestly, I didn't Bellator at all. Did you? Not a bit. The I didn't KSW. The only thing that I know about Bellator is uh, Michael Chandler or, nope. or Michael Venom Page versus uh, Paul Daly in Paul Connecticut. Daly. Yeah. In Connecticut. Both of those European all-stars, why aren't they doing it in the UK? Yeah, really good point. Really good point. Connecticut? Who's going to Connecticut to watch that fight? So, really interesting that they had ended up making that fight as far as the location. Hopefully, they change it before it's too late. But, um, man, UFC finale 28, Usman versus Dos Anjos, was our Friday night teaser for the weekend. Again, we had a bunch of other combat sports, but from the bottom to the top, starting off with that, I don't feel like we need to get into every single fight like we usually do because we have so much to break down, but really just highlights and Adelaide's still so fresh in my head that that's what I'm really, this already seems like three weeks ago to me. I know, but for our fans, I think we should go from the bottom to the top and if there's nothing good to say about it, we can fly through it. All if right. we don't remember anything, we'll move on from it. So we had the night start off with the bantamweight. Roni Barsolas versus Chris Gutierrez submission round number two. A lot of people saw that coming for the big favorite. Barsolas is just better all the way around. Uh, Gutierrez, Evil Twin, was all over. Uh, huh? Good thing I don't listen to Evil Twin because he was wrong. <laughs> wrong on wow. that. He even tried to get me to post on some stuff like, oh, Evil Twin saying Gutierrez. And I'm like, dude, I'm not going to expose my fans to a bad play. <laughs> <laughs> well, willingly expose them to a bad play. So, uh... I don't think it really shows much for Barcelos because I think he's at higher competition level already than Do you think he looked good or you expected everything he saw? I expected everything I saw, so he did look good, but yeah, it's, yeah, he's going to be not cheap. Overall, I feel like numbers-wise, we both did really well. Oh, Like, yeah. out of the amount we got on each card. I believe on the finale card, we both went 9 of 3, or 9 of and 3. 13? Yeah, 9 out of 12 or 13 cards. Oh, tonight? Yeah, um, 9 finale. of 12, and then tomorrow, 9 of 13? Yeah, I think that's what or we did. Or something like that. Close to that. But um, really good. I was impressed with... Yeah, way over that 50 And especially range. for myself, I usually don't tend to do well on the prelims, and I'm like, whoa, I'm slaying it. And then I didn't even <laughs> want to say anything aloud, because then I jinxed you jinx myself. You jinx it. Jinx it 100% of the time. That's why I try to hold back on some of those when my night starts off good, which we did have a few nights starting off really well. Actually... Never really slowed down. I made tons of profit this weekend. We moved on to the 70-pounders, though. Tim Means versus Rick Rainey. Rick Rainey doesn't really deserve to be in the UFC. You need to get on out of here. Bit too chinny. Low, low movement. And Tim Means is... Tim Means me, is back. Tim Means is back. <laughs> One of the worst call-outs of all time. Please, all UFC fighters, as soon as you win... Do not call out Diego Sanchez. It doesn't do anything for you. It doesn't make you look cool or badass. Would it have made you feel better if Tim Means called out Conor McGregor? Yes. At least he's punching up there. Yeah. When it's enough. against Diego Sanchez, a 55er who's by far the punchiest fighter. Um, ugh. I just really... It really ugh, irks me. But Tim Means... As we're saying, Tim Means is back. I don't know if he's. If I think he is we back. said we were going to say Tim Means is back. There's after, a couple Like, guys. I'm mocking it more than anything. Is that we thought he was going to walk through Rainy and then we'd be saying, or Tim Means is back. Was it this fight? No, I don't think it no. was this fight. But I think it's still in the same boat where we were saying about Tyson Pedro, I feel like. Um, 
But with Tim Means moving forward, I think if he has stiffer competition, it's going to be a much different fight. Rick Rainey, again, just is not at that level. Moving on to Roosevelt Roberts versus Daryl Horchard. Submission round number one, four minutes and 50 seconds into the first round. Roberts ends up ninja choking, guillotine, and holding Derek Horchard up against the fence, Matrix style. He was pinned up like a poster. Did you end up seeing that fight? Yes, I did. And we both had Daryl Horcher on the cast. Thought he was a big underdog at plus 280 around there. Not thinking Roosevelt was going to be able to do what he did in there. And I ended up switching over to Robert's decision after weigh-ins and seeing the size. Um, didn't play Horcher betting-wise, but I did put him on DraftKings because I thought it would go to decision. Did not pan out for me. Horcher really stung me on my DraftKings cards. But I was still able to stay alive by picking other guys and having Horcher be so low owned. Is Roosevelt Roberts the real deal? I'm still tentative on that. He's 6'2", really long, has a, he has a, his head is straight, straight up, but he goes for those guillotines and submissions nonstop and they seem to be working. Horcher, I think, is more caliber than anyone he's fought before and he ate him up. What is with this new super long guy at the 145 and 155 divisions? Very true. We got the Zabi, we got Sugar Shane, yeah. uh, Max is super tall, Brian Ortega is really tall. That 45-55 now, we're just getting a whole different build than the Frankie Edgars and totally. Chad Mendezes of yesteryear. Violet Bob Ross moving, wanting to move down from 55 to 45. That I dude, think that's a good idea for him. He's like 6'2". I, I just don't see it going great for him at 155. I think his name is more exciting than his... And I think... Dun, dun, dun. I don't think... I don't know if he's UFC caliber guy. Whoa! I think he's a fun guy. I but. think Trezino, legit, we were right, though. Trezino is a, way more of a dark horse than people think, though. I think we'll, Bob Ross can get finishes against other guys. But, not to get too far <laughs> away from this, Horcher, how do you feel about him? He's on a two-fight losing streak. Mm. Only won one against Powell. Who if he's willing to say. take a fight on short notice, they're going to let him keep taking a fight on short notice. I think he's uh, one of those guys that he won't. People will never remember seeing him fight, but he'll be on so many highlight reels. As the guy getting highlighted. Yeah. On. And Roberts, do you feel like he's a real deal or not? I think I do. Ooh. Because I'm not. Not okay. that I was super high on Horcher, but I had him to win by decision. I don't think he's a walk-through fight. And I thought Roosevelt handled himself in there in every way. I thought he looked better on the feet. That uh, The strength and that submission, like you were saying, holding him up against oh, the yeah. cage like that was insane. Um, I'm excited about him fighting again. Me too, me too. Moving on to the 45ers, we had debuting Lena Leston versus Julia Strelenko. Real quick to touch on... The announcers, we had Jimmy Smith and who else was his cohort that this night? I can't think oh of it. Oh my gosh. It was one of the worst announcing I jobs I've ever seen. I said that before about the same pairing. I agree with that. And Jimmy Smith not only was getting stats wrong for these fighters, he was getting history wrong. And he actually said that Julia Strolenko was the odds-on favorite for the entire week. Which wasn't, because I shit myself for a second being like... Did I somehow think this is wrong? I thought Lenton was the favorite, and I put way too much money on Lenton. So, it was just actually the announcers. They got multiple other things. I saw Twitter really getting on it, but um, dang. Jimmy Smith is... Something's going on with Jimmy Smith. He was off. Or is he carrying too much of the weight? Like, are we used to a three-guy panel now? Like, is our no, short attention No, because Adelaide fans? was a two-person panel, and they killed it, but we like those guys. They dance well together. Yeah, exactly. But they, uh, Jimmy Smith, whoever he was with, wasn't working. They need to keep mixing it around, for sure. For sure, for sure. So, Anik, this, maybe in Smith? We need some Anik in there? Yeah, I Next like Anik color commentary guy. I like, or is there some backdoor stuff where it's like, people don't want to work with certain people? Or can we get some DC? I always, always love, love me some DC on the side. Always, always love me some DC. So Lenton ended up walking through Julia Stracoli, which I don't think she's necessarily UFC caliber. <laughs> I like how many names you've called Different her. names I've called her. <laughs> Every single time it hasn't been the same one. You try. One. It's a hard one. <laughs> Strelongilia. <laughs> I just, I, I like it this way. I just try. I'm not even trying to second guess it. I'm like, yep, yeah, that's I think what it's, it is. I don't even remember this fight. <laughs> it was a decision. I don't have I don't anything know. to add. It was a tough fight. Moving forward, either fighter, I don't like at 145 pounds. 
Moving on to the heavyweights, we had Mr. Maurice Green coming in and defeating Michelle Batista, the wrestler. I think I called it spot on, saying that Batista is not. He's fighting on all of his credentials of being a wrestler, but not a mixed martial artist. He's a wrestler, and it showed in there. He was actually triangled off of his back by Mr. Green after the takedown. Mr. Green, not that big of a submission guy, really known as a glory K-1 striker, so... I had him submission. Everyone was so shocked about him getting the submission, and that's what I had. Green submission. If you listen to Lesbo and me, <laughs> Lesbo had green submission. Because he's had two submissions in his last five fights. Good point, good point. So, Miss- but garbage body on Mr. Green. I felt like both dudes do a little bit of extra work. Even stay in the heavyweight division. Add muscle over just midsection blub. Interesting. He's 6'7". He's a big guy. With a garbage midsection. <laughs> but Green ended up really cashing for me on DraftKings throughout the night. He was somebody I, I had played a lot. a couple places. Then we move on to the 125ers where Joey Benavidez came in against Alex Perez. Wayne's had me a little worried here. Perez outsized Joey B by a lot. A lot, a lot. And I still stayed with Joey B as a decision. I was thinking, hey, this number 12 guy against number 3... I didn't like what I saw from Joey Benavides in there. I thought he was looking a little stiff, a little bit slower. His head was straight up and down. But again, those old man tactics of having such a long record, he was able to just dissect Alex Perez and hit him in the back of the head 25 times in order to get the finish twice in one round. I, um, this was even, we had controversy with this uh, stoppage. I actually thought he, Joey Benavidez, hit him in the back of the head too many times, and I didn't know that was a legal strike. 25 times! Like, how many times did he just... But did the ref, was this uh, Eve Levine's, stepped in, let him go, let Benavidez keep striking to the back of the head and finally called it a TKO? Yeah, but that's what we were wondering, was... Are, is it legal for them to hit to the back of the head? The only time it's legal to, that it's okay is that if you turn your head when a kick or a punch is coming and you and turn... you get hit in between. Right. Or so if you do a spinning back The pure fist. amount of shots they let Joey Benavidez land to the, knock him out, then he stopped the fight. I actually thought that he was going to say it was a disqualification. 100%. Two strikes to the back of the head, and I thought that he was going to give the fight to Alex Perez by disqualification. And then he let the fight go on, and then the exact exact same thing happened again it was weird it was really weird so i need some clarification on that fight i don't understand so i want to i want to say joey benavidez look good but doing what this is one of those times as well where we see mark ratner who happened to be in the building who is the commissioner for vegas come in and actually talk on the mic and say no the first time a ref touches you at all you stop all action whether that's a dq or a timeout that was wrong. And he says, we'll, we'll address that and we'll talk to that ref. But when your boss gets on the mic and talks to the freaking world, someone's getting in trouble. Someone's getting in trouble. But Did it the was boss weird. get on? I thought yeah. just the announcer was saying it on no, the side. No, no, no. Mark Ratner was, it didn't show the little like, oh, Mark. And then they even showed him during the kerfuffle sitting there in the corner. But we had a thing because I'm like, I've seen them stop and they continue to fight because you were like, once it's touched, the fight should be over. Once, but yeah. I'm like, sometimes they stop and they're like, no, nope, here's but, the rules. Don't hit to the fucking back of the head. Don't poke in the eye. Don't kick in the dick. Don't do whatever they have to warn them about. We've right. seen it stop for warnings. Or then it's like if you're doing the naughty thing but have that um, advantageous position, you don't get that position back if you're the one doing the bad the thing. Fouling. But if I'm the one doing the bad thing and you were the one that like had me up against the cage, you get that position back. Totally. That's what I understood it to be. So I thought it was really crazy. <laughs> that whole thing was shit. It was shit. Shit. By so. far, by far, shit. It's going to be hopefully one of the rare times we see that because, oof. And Didn't I don't we think see this, Eve Levine do other weird shit I was tonight? about to say, it's not the only time we're going to mention him. We'll get there okay. once we get there. But uh, moving forward with Joey B, stays where he's at, number three, if they keep the division around. <laughs> Yeah, he's, they're not going to have the division around anymore. So I'm really interested on these guys absorbing into the 135 anyway. I wonder where Joey B goes from there. Agreed. Probably best move is if he gets released over to one and fights a yeah. lot of local talent out maybe. there. So Go over to one, maybe take Megan with. It seems like the hot new play. One, one's doing that little murmur. Don't take my Olivi. Don't take my Olivi. <laughs> <laughs> I know uh, Fox Sports actually used her a few weekends ago on the football programming. 
I don't like that. Um, I also like, uh, what's the black woman's name? Karen Bryan. She does a great job. I really enjoy yeah, her I, and Michael I, Bisping. She, I think she has a great way of keeping the dude fighters at bay on that show. She's a strong black woman. Yeah, she's she great. She knows how I to take care it. of herself. I really love, I like the whole Fox team. I, I think they have great chemistry and I uh, like everyone who does it. Nope. I'm going to have, I'm going to say the only person I don't like on the Fox team not Quill, T. Wood. Oh, I like T. Wood. I don't care for T. Wood on that announcing desk. I like T. Woods. I like most other people. <laughs> you just don't like T. Woods, though. Uh, I agree. I hate on T. Woods, like but T. I make money off T. Woods. I bet. I think he's a, a undershown talent. I, 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 I definitely. He's a high level. Up you don't there. like his race baiting. I, I guess that's what that's where it stems from. That's where it stems from. <laughs> <laughs> so, moving on to the 45ers, we had debut and Kevin Aguilar come in against Rick Glenn and win a three-round decision. Had Kevin Aguilar has a nice tiger tattoo. Kevin Aguilar has got a dog in him. That boy can fight. Uh, that was not an easy fight. Rick Glenn came at him, actually kept Aguilar off of it on his I think we back said this fight was, could be boring. It was a great fight. It was a great, great fight. Uh, both fighters hurt multiple times in here. A thing that we forgot to mention that hasn't happened in a while, and it usually happens in Vegas because they use a very specific venue, they had a 25-foot cage in there, which we haven't seen in a long time. And they had a 25-foot walkout. <laughs> Did you see how long <laughs> yeah, their walkout was? Yeah. So that's something that we usually like to take into consideration because it changes the dynamic, especially with bigger fighters. Heavyweights all of a sudden, it's like, uh-oh, I take two steps and my back's on the cage. It does change in there. But Rick Glenn... Um, and Aguilar, I think that was a huge step up for Aguilar, and he met it. I didn't think it was going to happen. It was definitely fight of the night contender. I liked what I saw from both guys in there. Glenn does look like he's starting to slow down, though, with as many brutal fights as he had. And uh, moving forward, I like Aguilar in a lot of spots in there. He showed a lot, a lot of heart. I like both guys going forward as live underdogs still. I think both I, guys I could ruin a fight night. Definitely, definitely. Then we move on to Antonia Shevchenko coming in against Yi Yang Kim. And the biggest aspect of this fight was Valentina Shevchenko. Just like we said, it's all Valentina. The name recognition, the money line, everything. The fact that this went to a decision with a 4-1 to favorite, you know, and it wasn't super outclassed. She did win three rounds to one on a fighter who was four and a half pounds overweight in Kim. But, um... I thought she picked her apart, though, everywhere. Yeah, she, in the clinch. Like, true, true. everywhere. I actually was... Not that I ever hated on Antonia, but I definitely did not feel like she was in the same ballpark as her sister. Agreed. I do think she is. I think it's... It did take her a little bit of time to get started, but I'm thinking back to uh, Valentina's first fights and how she was so... It wasn't just her slow going to get started in those first three rounds and those second three rounds in the UFC. Her ball has gotten... like She's getting more and more comfortable every time she's under those lights. So uh, uh, Valentina gets started quicker. So if Antonia is anything like her sister, I think she is going to get better every single time we see her. Like, I just just more comfortable... Um, I think she has more to show, and I think she's going to step up to the level of her competition. And she impressed me more than I thought she was going to. Not that I was a hater, I just thought she was name recognition alone. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. And I yeah. actually thought she point fighted pretty. Which we called. She's a point yeah. fighter. We thought it was going to be a decision. Um, but hey, some of her what reversals are you do? surprised me. Some of her transitions surprised me. I did not think she was going to have any ground game, any stand-up. She actually had great takedown defense. Yep. There were some things that were surprising. Uh, with that, though, Kim, I don't think is that high of level as well. There was... It was a fun fight. Um, Again, I think, though, the entire fight, the thing I think the most of is, Hey! 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 The hey. entire crowd and Twitter blew hey. up. Yeah. So... Valentina needs to get that attention. It bothers One way her I love her, but it's like, girl, let your sister fucking shine a little here. Let her get some of the. Well, it comes accolades. off of a Muay Thai. It's their Muay Thai background. Is that normal in Muay Thai fights? It, hey! Uh, in Muay Thai fights, all three corners are doing it, not just the other. Oh, okay. Yeah, That's yeah. Totally. So it's not, it's, it's not that weird. It's just and she not didn't common. She did it for every hit, only on the really good ones and the good combinations. Hey, hey, hey! 
I thought it was every every hit. It was, and there was even times she was quiet. Like I wondered if I'm like. Where'd but then the fans even were like, hey. "Hey, it was fun. It was fun." Would it, you have liked it if Antonia was in there and she did a dance and spinned around, or do you think she needs her own? <laughs> <laughs> I think she needs her own. And I noticed some people just call her El Pantera only yep. and keep her name like the same way, um, like they don't call Machete. You know, or um, a machete, they a maheta or whatever. Those are two different things. One's uh, a machete, one's a hammer. Isn't there what's um? Isn't there somebody that's machete, but they spell they have it in Spanish and they only talk about it in Spanish. El machete. I think maheta is. But yeah, they never call him the hammer. They usually call him maheta. Yeah, which right? is hammer. Which I is know. A I I only saw um. Antonia uh-huh. being talked about El Pantera. La Pantera. Forever, forever, forever. Uh-huh. El and is then Yair. they started calling her the Panther uh, at the end, which I'm wondering if somebody got it in their ear and they're like, we need to switch this. We need to, we need to market her in up. English. Yeah, yeah, like the Panther. We're going to like start calling her the Panther from this point forward. Um, I could see that. Know. I could also so. see it being easier for the announcers as well. Just to... Do you think she's a cutie? I'm a... Uh... Valentina on my tacos. You like? You think Valentina's cuter? <laughs> I I I am a fi- a little more of a fan, but I guess of blondes. No, I can't really say that. But uh, Antonia is a good looking woman, just not my type. I don't know why. A little too long for me. I feel I like I, they're both I'd be climbing in up a tree. Different ways. I'd be gl- going for a coconut up they're a tree. They're both good looking in different ways, and, and neither of them's a cupcake. Just saying. Just saying. <laughs> just saying. What about uh, Kim? Um, hmm. she's all right. <laughs> she's all right. <laughs> Moving on to the 85ers, we had debuting Edmund Sabarian, the Edmund disciple against did Darren Stewart. Did you miss Stewart. Edmund? It's Edmund the coach? Edmund! Yeah. I did not at all. And a uh, funny fact, they had to bring up Rousey on this young man's walkout. Rousey, who oh, has yeah. nothing to do with him. Oh, yeah. And she doesn't even train there anymore. And they're like, oh, we're disciple, rousy disciple, which um, I got to say, the 21-year-old came in and I thought he was going to underperform. But the person who definitely shit the bed nonstop, Darren Stewart, every freaking time. Every time Darren Stewart gets me. Can't get this guy right. And what really pisses me off about Darren Stewart is he has all of the tools, all of the athleticism, and none of the IQ. He was in there flailing to the ref, asking the ref to get him up when he could be trying to get up himself. And if you want to piss me off more than anything being a fighter, it is being like, hey, ref, come on, let me up, which we saw all weekend long, which... Oh, yeah, that makes me furious. Right, it's no Stop looking at the... Especially if you're getting hit. You look so stupid when you're asking for a ref to stand up and then you get punched in the face. You look so stupid. Like, protect yourself in there, fool. Definitely. So Darren Stewart ended up losing round one and two to the takedown. I mean, Edmund just pushed him up against the cage, got him to the ground, and used his high school wrestling to overpower Darren Stewart. In the third round, Stewart was finally, after a gas for Edmund, um, was able to get up a bit and put something together. A lot of people thought that that third round was a 10-8 round, but Stewart did it to himself. He has only himself to blame at. And I, I had Chavez on, but, uh-huh. <laughs> but I just... <laughs> Thought he, I did. I thought I was expecting him to go in there and have be stand up boxer, and he was primarily a wrestler. I felt like the whole fight was a wrestling fight, and yep. the one thing he impressed me was how he got it together. And even though he was so gassed by round two, huh. I thought Pombo was spent, and he just went into his wrestling alone game. Like, he just stuck there. I felt like it was smart. Like, for a first time in there, good IQ, yeah. Definitely good IQ for a 21-year-old with limited... Where do we go with Darren Stewart and Edmund here? I think Edmund gets a couple other wins in the UFC. He's got a lot of growing to do, which is good. We're really going to see him grow. Do we need to see him to go to a new camp? The same thing we say about Travis, the same thing we say about Ronda. I don't mind that at all. (laughs) Already, get out of there. Smart thing, get out of there. Now that you fought in the UFC, all right, dude, get on out of there. Find another place. Darren Stewart, um, I think it's time for you to, even though he's coming off of his a win and now a loss, he's going to get another fight in there. But ah, I just, this guy is kryptonite. Absolute kryptonite. I'm staying away from Stuart. 
On to the 35ers, we had Pedro Munoz coming in against Brian Caraway in a first round TKO. Brian Caraway being all sorts of butt hurt in there, um, but that's Brian Caraway. He does not like to lose, doesn't take it well. And uh, I felt like we were saying here at that B that um, Munoz was going to be able to let his strikes go because he's not worried about Brian Caraway on the ground. I think that's what happened. I ended up still playing the decision, giving a little credit to Caraway, but. Uh, Looks like Munoz picked them apart with those teeps to the body. Here, the announcers were like, I don't know what that was. Like a, a kick to the gut or something? Or try a teep to the oblique? Come on, you're getting paid, guys. It was just, they were like, we've never seen that before. I'm like, when have you not seen that? that it happens. wasn't like a next level. It wasn't weird or random, and they were baffled in this situation. It was really, ah, Jimmy Smith really let me down. I love Pedro Munoz in there, but it makes me a little nervous because I know Brian Caraway isn't the most powerful, but I still really like Pedro Munoz going forward. Brian Caraway, he's really your perfect gatekeeper mm -hmm. for running your, if you're trying to build up a star like a Sage Northcutt, and you let him fight a few fights and then he's about to start fighting the bigger guys, someone you can put him up against that you're not worried about him getting knocked out and they can test their ground game before they move on to the top five, ten guys. So I think Brian Carey is a good guy to keep around in the UFC. If he went to one, Brian Carey would wear a belt right now. <laughs> <laughs> I could see that. He'd be a top five contender for sure. For sure, for sure. Um, if Misha Tate's going to hook up her ex. <laughs> <laughs> do you think... Brian Caraway has an opening to that solar plexus. Do you think he's soft in the body? No, I actually think that would have fucking stopped anyone. anyone? Yeah, I would have probably shit blood on the mat. I can't even believe it. Pedro Munoz, in my opinion, looks so good in there. And he threw not only did he throw like three or four teeps in there to the solar plexus, he also threw to the left and right to the body. I mean, he was targeting that body hard. He made me excited. Yeah, agreed. It was agreed, like, agreed. Watch it. He even his body looked new. He looked like ready to be in there. Agreed. That was a fun fight. I hope He's we get to, to see, right I, yeah, I hope we get to see him fight um on a big card. He soon. called. He called out for a big fight short notice as well. He took minimal damage in there. Completely. Who what was his call out? I, I can't remember that. it off. There were so many fights, but we'll eventually get to it. Then we hit the Finale finalists in Macy Chieson defeating Peiny Kazad in a submission round number two. This fight made up for the other woman's 145. I would agree. This was a scrap. Both of these ladies, really good friends in there, had a fun stare off in there, almost kissed. We all would have liked to have seen it, but you but get what I think Kian Zad is married. And Middle Eastern, so you know it's all sorts of not okay out there. Oh, is she Middle Eastern? Yeah, she came. I believe she was the first Iranian woman. Oh, that's very cool. Yeah. I didn't know. And they profiled her, but she had been fighting out of Sweden for a long time. So she had some issues with Sweden trying to claim her. And she's like, I'm this. And Macy Kiasan is, she hasn't been fighting at all long. She's like somebody that's like, almost like a Megan Anderson. I built like this. And then yes. they just told me I should fight. And one of her biggest claims to fame, apparently, is taking a bullet to the stomach and living. Because she, <laughs> she took it to the gut and it was only a fatty tissue area, area. So she probably was like, I need to get in that MMA. It took two months yeah, of healing inside the hospital. Brutal. I actually played Panny on a decision on my tap. But drafting wise, I thought that Chase On was the valley play. And I had Chase On everywhere. Wow. So really paid off for me on that and it was I didn't see the submission I thought it was going to be strike wing wise and even though both of these ladies were really good friends and it showed as soon as the fight was over they were trying to finish each other which I love loved yeah, love it was a good fight it was a good fight definitely one to go I back and I enjoyed it and I'm excited about both women in the 145 division uh, they both really put their heart into it and um, Kiesa's not trying to steal my hair <laughs> totally trying to steal my hair but she actually impressed me in there I Agreed. can't believe how much she's learned in such a short period of time. Both of these fighters are going to keep growing dramatically from this point on as well. Both young ladies in the division. Actual contenders at 145? Mm, I don't think either of them. They're either. starting to fill the division. They're starting yeah. to fill it. Finally. Finally. And it looks like, okay, some caliber in there. I'd like Kia San versus Megan Anderson. I think that's a fun fight. Folks, agreed. 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 Uh, I could even see a couple tune-up fights for either one of them mm. before that as well. Then we go on to the heavyweights, tough finale Chukagian. finalists. We had Juan Espino defeating Justin Frazier in a submission round number one. And Frazier, 
I thought was going to get that first turn on TKO. Thought he was going to use his knees and uppercuts a lot more and didn't at all. Espino, the grappler and former rugby player, Mama's Boy, actually dedicated this fight to his mom. Lived with his mom and has been taking care of her for a while. Great story all the way around. Um, looks like he knows what he needs to do in there. Doesn't try to be a striker. Gets you to the ground, does a job. And when you're talking about money, that's what you want to see. Frazier, I'm going to be hesitant on from this point on, but I liked what I saw from Espino in there. Stick to that game plan. He's going to get a lot more wins in the division. How do you feel about this fight? I totally agree, and I actually think he, his body was in so much better shape compared to the beginning of the season that he might be a guy that just continues to stay on getting in better and better and better shape that we see his cardio just go through the roof. Which and you say those rugby players. People. Yeah, mall, mall, and mall. And Espino's legs were huge. Did you see those tree trunks? I had a Spino submission. I did not think it was going to come in round one. I just thought he was eventually out cardio, the Grizzly. He actually, I think I texted this or did the shoot, shot this out from Lesbo in the Bean that he mauled the Grizzly. 100% true. He did maul the Grizzly. Didn't give him a chance in there. But great IQ. That's, what you, again, what you want to see. What you want to see. Are wrestlers so, the top of every division? Yes. The only thing that we're starting to maybe see beat the wrestlers is going to be okay. this style bender type, John Jones-esque style. Of, Who's a wrestler? Uh, also, um, but I, I think they have to have the wrestling comfortable enough, or at least the defense, to throw these crazy kicks and stuff like that. But maybe the long sugar chains and long... Uh, Body types? Yeah, uh-huh. like, like Roosevelt. Like, you know, maybe those are the only thing that's going to... The fun thing about combat sports and combat in general is once you think you have an advantage, there is a counter. Usually for tall guys, you got to go to the body, which we've seen an underdeveloped body game that's now been coming forward. But from what I know from boxing and a lot of other stuff, because you get those pads, those limbs, they can always move their head back. That But their body's got to stay in one spot. So fun, fun. I agree. I like it. The evolution of MMA, we're watching it before our eyes. Speaking of getting mauled. We had a 170-pound bout main event with Kamaru Usman versus Rafael Dos Anjos in a five-rounder. Had Usman everywhere here, saw a decision coming in. Everyone saw it. Um, No one was really surprised other than I feel like everyone repeated what we said here at Lat B after Dos Anjos lost. He's not really a 155-er. Or he's not really a 170 year, which we said beforehand, like, you're going to see the difference here. Usman is a real 70 pounder. And that's pretty much what happened. I don't have much to say here because I feel like we were spot on. You got to listen to the breakdown and it's what we expected. Did Usman call out anybody after this? I don't even know. I didn't listen. Kobe, maybe. I think it was Kobe. I think Kobe's fighting T. Woods. That's what I think, too. I, I just think Usman's the better version of Kobe. A lot of people say that, and that's an interesting fight all of a sudden. But I do feel like it is Colby T. Wood. That's but I, and I love Usman. The only he you love Usman. I obviously <laughs> we trust Usman, um, but the only way with T. Wood, it's the cardio that he. I think T. Woods could have more dangerous hands, but also yep. Usman, his striking looked better than ever before in there. I was actually really impressed with his striking because usually he has crazy punches. They just look sloppy as fuck. I thought he looked crisp and to the point, and he was beating up uh, Dos Anjos on the feet as well. Was there, though, I believe, that evil twin, and we were texting as well. Um, In the second round, Usman looked a little bit gassed for a split second, and then all of a sudden, third, fourth, and fifth came around, and Usman got it back together in that minute span. There was a split second where Usman took two deep breaths and everybody was like, he's slowing down. I don't know if I'd ever did with Usman. Oh, okay. I, maybe I I'm wrong with that. I thought somebody with Dos Anjos. I was, whew, I just thought it was a Molly. Maybe, maybe we did. Maybe we totally text about it. This is like 36 hours ago, this fight. I can't <laughs> possibly remember it. Very true. I thought we did a pretty good job there, actually. L- referencing a lot of those fights because then we move on yeah we just flew through that whole thing in like a half hour perfect perfect time and right on schedule so then we move on to ufc adelaide dos santos versus tai tuivasa and this was a money-making night here at lappy i don't care who you are you're tailing us on free bets or not listening to DraftKings. we both cashed big had a lot of key plays in here um and it started off with 
debuting Damir Ismailov versus Alex Georgies, the local short notice replacement, ended up going to a unanimous decision and the Twitter trolls were out on this one because this was a absolute garbage fight. A minus 500, 550 fighter ended up getting a decision with somebody who doesn't deserve to be in there. Um, it was This was one of those times that Georgies was asking the ref to get him up and the ref wasn't letting him up. And instead of Dimitri or Demir moving to side control, full mount, any of that stuff, he just stayed in half guard. Kept getting a shot, getting which is a good game plan, but you could see that Demir could have finished his opponent at any given time in there and just chose to ride it out. I was just thoroughly disgusted because he was a better fighter in every position. And moving forward, Demir's going to be a tough guy in there, but there's he's going to have He's not much making harder. any fans any faster. Exactly. Like, and he's going to have this. nothing but hard fights coming up. Yeah. Georgie's was not UFC caliber. If he gets in there again, I'm betting against him 100%. Did I say this guy showboats? He was trying to slap and talk all this crap. And I just, yeah, not UFC caliber. Bet against him whenever you get the point. How do you feel overall about Same. this one? Same. Then we went, we stayed in the 55 pound division where Christoph Yagos beat Mizoto Hirota. I had a big underdog here in Hirota. And in the third round, for a split second, I thought. Maybe Hirota was going to get that finish. I was hoping. Giagos, that gas tank, looks good for that first minute. For a first round, I mean. Second round slows down. Third round, he almost just tapped due to the exhaustion. He was gassed and got tons of punching power, but really loops in his punches and throws so much weight into him that he throws himself out of position against higher level competition. Giagos is somebody that I'm tentative on. I'm really scared about where he goes moving forward. He can blow out chumps. Um... And Hirota, time to get on out of here, my friend. Four in a row. You just, you're 37 years old. It's time to move on. Thanks for all the fights. I had Giago's decision. I didn't put it too heavily anywhere. It was just exciting to have another check mark of the like right column in the night. So it didn't affect me either way. Totally. I didn't have a lot of faith. Did you play either one of those fighters on your drafting no. bunch? I did have Hirota on a few thinking it was going to be a decision. I cashed. He didn't get me in that first place, but he did help me. Hirota did help me cash um, on another, a few other spots just because of the low on price. Then we move on to debuting Kai Kara France versus Elias Garcia, the Pettis cousin. And I thought this was the fight that Garcia was. This is the one that I remember more than any of the other two fight nights that Garcia was getting manhandled yep. and kept looking to the ref with his hands up in the air and like, hey, you know, look at this guy's not doing anything. And then he'd get punched three times by not paying attention. I just thought right. he looked so foolish. This is the one that I remember more than anything that I thought Kara France, I'm so interested in, and I think he got 50K. Yeah, this was a potential fight of the night. This was a brutal one. There was spots in there where Elias Garcia off of his back had Kara France in triangles and armbar sequence that was deep. And a lot of I know we're going to talk attacked. about it, but I will not remember once we get it all the way to the end. Kara France, only hometown guy to win. The truth. Only hometown the truth. guy. Which Lesbo Nuts. called spot on. Nuts. Lesbo called spot spot on. But uh, there was times in there where Garcia almost had him in that triangle armbar and Kai Kara France defended perfectly, which is he exactly what we want to see. He did all the right things. I was hearing you in my ear while I was watching it. He needs to step over. He'd step over. Yep. He needs to turn around. Look, at he slid him up against the fence so he can't get any other leverage. Like I felt like it was a really good display Great of defensive. Showing. and what The one thing that I didn't like about this fight for Garcia was his corner. Anthony Pettis saying, you got to get up. You got to oh. get up. You got to get up. You got. How about a little put your hand on the mat? Control his wrist, get a knee on the ground, use the fence. Not you got you got to get up doesn't help anybody. So, and who should know that better than freaking Anthony Pettis? Is that the the advice he likes his corner to scream at him when he's inside the octagon? Right. Stop getting hit. You need to stop getting hit. <laughs> exactly. Stop getting hit and don't let him take you down. Don't let him take you down. 
<laughs> it was I, rough coaching there. You know what? Um, he would have done better with Mike Perry's ex girlfriend as a corner oh, man. I totally agree. <laughs> totally agree. You so, got another job, girl. <laughs> maybe Elias Garcia needs to change camps. <laughs> that was his but cousin. It was his cousin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but I like Elias Garcia. I think France looked really, really good in there and does really well in the I division. Agree. He's next level. Oh, um, look at. There's no division. 125. Oh, no. And we just had these sick ass fights. Yeah. Man. But 35, even if he goes up, France goes up to 35 and Garcia, they both look like they are heavy dudes in there. They both didn't look Or maybe small. they might keep the division all dependent on if TJ wins. Maybe it's just the fuck you with Henry Cejudo. This is one of those Dana White moments where Dana White said, Tough House is over. This is the final season ever. And then officially after this weekend, it's like, it makes ratings for us. So not officially over. Same with the 125 pound division. If there's a couple good fights and people make enough clamor and Dana White could be like, eh, maybe we're going to keep it around for a little. And longer. even if you're, this is one of those fights in my opinion that could not only make you a fan of uh, wrestling and grappling, but also make you a fan of the 125 division and why they're both so important in the UFC. I know that uh, grappling gets a lot of haters when they w- watch mixed martial arts. And I thought this was such a great exchange. Yeah, I really totally enjoyed agree. this fight. It was a really, really fun one. Interesting thing. I believe this was the only fighter, though, that was tied to that Adesanya, Volkanovsky, Hing Hook- Hooker. He's a part of that gym, Kaikar Francis, which we saw Adesanya oh, getting yes, up on his feet for this. The other Australian fighters were from other contingencies. And right after this, I actually was wondering. I was kept putting bad omens on everything because of how many hometown guys lost. <laughs> uh, right after this fight, here's where I think it first started to go wrong. Adesanya did a shoey. Ooh, which he said he would never. I think. And maybe he said he would never, yeah. but I also think it should be something that's saved for the end. Uh, like right after. Well, no, he drank but there, it, but, no but this is won. the only guy that was in his camp, so he did the shoot because the other guys they're local guys, but they maybe don't he train with the him. Mo out of the room, but that's not what I really think. I don't think the shoey had anything to do with it. <laughs> I'll talk but, about those fights when we get there. <laughs> well, one of the few shoeys done over the night because nothing to celebrate. For the other fighters. Nothing. But we move on to Kenta Nakamura at 170 pounds versus Samlin Tahuri. Tahuri just got outclassed in there by Nakamura. Nakamura being a longtime veteran. He's a lot of his tricks, a lot of his grappling. A lot of people saw this happening as a 3-1 to one favorite for Nakamura. I don't really move anywhere with here. Tahuri, necessarily not UFC caliber. I think to- Nakamura is a borderline top 20 guy gatekeeper to just be in the UFC where Tahuri's already failed a few times. Wardley Alves, not so bad. Nakamura, he didn't look as like he usually does in there, but moving forward, tentative on either one of these guys. I feel the exact same way. I had Nakamura decision and I was like, Ooh, I was nervous about it while I was watching it. It was really hard to tell. And I only could tell who, because it felt like to hurry hit, maybe his shots were a little more devastating, even though that Nakamura had, a, I was just not a huge fan of this fight altogether. Yeah, all the way so. around. This actually got to say all you fans, I had to take note and step back and be like, man, I have been so spoiled for so, so long because after this Nakamura to Huri fight, I was struggling to stay awake, and it wasn't just me. That France went to a decision, but still, this is four decisions in a row after we got a bunch of finishes. It was just, we've been spoiled for a while. We've been having a lot, a lot of good fights. We forget sometimes how these can drag on. And I was shot out of a cannon. Oh, really? I was you shot out feel, of a cannon. You weren't, oh, I no, feel. I was shot out of a cannon. All, it was like... The last night or Friday night, yeah. I was had a little bit harder time. Neither night, I was like, it was. Oh, I, I was mentally tough. prepared for the weekend. I had to, but I have one of these cruds going around. I got one of those upper respiratory things. So you got one of them government bugs. Yeah, it was tough for me to stay awake, but I guess I was a bit crabby. Um, it was though. A lot of decisions. Then we ended up moving to Wilson Hayes defeating Ben Nguyen via decision. I had this all wrong. I had Nguyen a finish in the third round. Didn't think Hayes was uh, gonna, his chin was gonna hold up. And 
Wilson Haste uses wrestling. He actually switched camps for the first time in a long time to AKA and uses wrestling nonstop in there. This this Wilson Haste, I'll fucking bet on every time. Agreed. But we haven't seen this Wilson Haste no, in a while. No, and he looked so good and he took some shots and he looked solid yep. while he took a... I, I just thought... I felt like the game plan from beginning to end, he controlled this fight. Uh, easy. Easy win, in my opinion. Totally. And I had Haste as an underdog on a few of my cards because he was so cheap. And yep. I felt like... He's um, the one who cashed you out. If he got finished... It would be in the third, and I still thought he'd get enough points in between. I actually just thought it'd be from rabbit punches. I didn't think I'd he'd come in with this wrestling game plan at all. It right. was unbelievable. I was really impressed, even though I had Nguyen this to win. This was one of the also bad coaching situations where Ben Nguyen's corner kept telling him that he was split up and he was 1-1 going into the third. And Ben Nguyen was actually surprised when this went a unanimous decision to Wilson Hayes, which... I saw 30-27 for Hayes as well. I, the fact that I Ben thought, Nguyen even questioned. I don't think, I think once he heard the scores, he was like, oh yeah, he knew it wasn't him. I thought when he, they said the scores and then they didn't say him, he gave like a, whoa. I thought he gave a, whoa, I don't know. And a, or maybe he just was like, whoa, I can't believe I lost every round. It, it could have been that. But his corner was also not giving him good advice. No. It was so. Ben Nguyen, he likes to travel a lot. He's gone everywhere. He goes to the UK, Europe, um, all sorts of other, in Australia, but he's a Southern California guy. Maybe for him, it's time to stick to a legit camp and just stay there for a long time. But he's jumped around from every single camp. Moving on, or where do we go moving forward with Nguyen? I don't know. I don't know either. Against wrestlers, he's going to have a tough time. But against strikers, he can do well. He could be a fun fight still. Right, right, right. right. So he still has a little while in there. But again, another 125 fight that might not be around. Yeah, uh, yeah, for sure. Or maybe it'll be super interesting at 135 and be for a really thick division. Ben Nguyen's one of these guys that actually looks like a 25er to me. Where Wilson Hayes was. Yes. He was I was actually super curious of Wilson Hayes going up. Yeah, both I, guys. I'm I'm really I like just because there's going to be so many 125ers moving up. What about if two 125ers are now at 135? It like it evens the game for them instead of them fighting a whole bunch of bigger guys. Definitely. Then we go to the 70 pounders where Ales- Alexi Kunichkeo defeated Yushin Okami in a decision. I had Okami here thinking he was going to be able to outgrapple the Russian fighter and. The juice is loose. And Alexi, that dude was bodied up, showed a good gas tank, really showed great takedown defense. Yushin Okami at 170, 85, or 205 is just washed as a fighter. His entry to his shots are gone. Yushin Okami had all sorts of burnt up legs and eventually just started pulling guard, which is you never want to see somebody pull guard, DraftKings wise, any type of wise, because he gives up top control and Alexi ended up just picking him apart the whole time. A lot of people were upset that the finish didn't come here because Okami looked like he was ready to go pretty much that second round out. Um, I actually think you stay far, far away. I, it, it's crazy that it that it didn't get the finish. It's crazy. I think you stay away from both fighters. I agree with that, and I was going to eventually allude to that as well. I didn't like what I saw from either fighter as bad as Okami looked. Again, he should have finished him. It's at the same spot we were earlier on in the night with Demir. Demir should have blown him out of the water. Didn't. Okay. You got a tough fight coming up, buddy. Got tough fights. Agree. Moving on to the main event. We have Jim Crew defeating Paul Craig via submission. Round number one. Ended up working Paul Craig over. I actually... Paul Craig looked better than he usually does to me in there. Had better strikes, better kicks than he usually does. But uh, the Brute Crew... Coming in with that brown belt out of, who is he, a Machado brown belt, which I didn't know until afterwards, really helped settle crew. I played him on a lot of my DraftKings. I had a TKO round number three. It ended up being a submission, which Lesbo had, correct? Am I right on I had this? KO round one. Oh, never mind. It was another fight. But either way, um, crew in here, like what I see from this young man, 21, 22 years old, is it his Resident Evil tattoo? <laughs> Is that in line for one of the worst tattoos in the UFC? No way. I think it's awesome. It's dope? Okay. I like it all right. And it's the it's Brute different. Crew. Also people calling him. What was the other nickname going around Twitter last night? 
Um, crude. Crude. I am I crude know. is what they were saying. Oh. I am crude. So, like what I see, but also Paul I, Craig is low ca- low caliber fighter. He is, but I actually thought Paul Craig looked so good in there yeah. last night. Yeah. I really enjoyed both guys, and I thought their exchanges were so fun. Another fun exchange on the ground. Totally. This is stuff if you... And super, 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 hey, Adelaide, I love you. All of our Australian fans, thank you so fucking much for being educated. Totally agree. Thank you so fucking much. It was so enjoyable to listen to them go on the, a few funny things. They love Ric Flair over in Australia. Yes. I don't know if they know it's Ric Flair. It's like Baba Booey. It's like, woo! <laughs> um, they are super educated on the ground. And then I loved how one dude could get the whole entire arena going and they let it happen where they'd be like, uh, like blah, blah, blah. Like, oh, oh, yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah. And they did that quite a few times. They also showed up from the first fight of the night, by the way. Yeah. They, they were, were in the house from the first fight. Respect, respect, Adelaide. Australia knows what's up, for sure. And they're bringing out beasts. I can't wait until beasts. Lesbo and the Bean goes to Australia. Oh, me too. Me I too. I can't wait. I can't wait till That's we're right. doing this full-time for a living, and we're traveling to Australia to hang out with uh, people. Definitely. So I can hold a baby kangaroo and drink a pint. I want to give something to a dingo. To a dingo. A baby? <laughs> no. No, I don't. You want to give a baby to a dingo? I do not want to do that. So, <laughs> then we move on to sack. I think both guys, though, real quick, uh-huh. can catch other guys in submissions. They're, neither mm-hmm. guy is going to be a knockout artist, but both guys can catch any other guys in I, weird I, submissions. Sorry. I would agree as well. I like crew moving forward, and I was actually lower on Paul Craig. I think Paul Craig showed out more than so. I think he beats other guys now. When I didn't before coming into this fight, I thought this was, yeah, good showing for him. Then we move on to Yusef defeating Suman Maktari in the debut Maktarian brother. TKO round number one. Some people saying this was early. I'm saying this was spot on. This actually saved Maktarian from a beating that he didn't need. He un- he did not answer back to 15 strikes after being hurt. Um, Yusef, using a very coined term here with being black explosive, the Nigerian himself came out and just picked apart Maktarian everywhere. I don't really think it sh- shows too much because I'm really low on Maktarian. Um, but Yusef looked explosive. Black explosive, I mean, in there. What did you think about this fight overall? It was a short one. I thought he looked really good. It was kind of quick. I felt like Mokhtarian, is this the one that he was up against the cage with his hands up by his ears? Yep, yep, yep. I don't think he got a lot of damage on that. It looked really crazy, and it's one of those ones where he would have burnt himself out from that exchange just punching the homeboy's arms. Okay. And then it might have been, uh, but he looked... I, I didn't think it was a robbery or anything. I thought Yusuf looked b- far better for the two minutes of a fighter um, in there. Oops, just a, maybe it was a little bit earlier of a call, but um, I still loved everything I saw from Yusuf, and I'm so fucking sad that he lost his brother last week. Oh, and he was even saying oh, that he's crying in the shower. Right and on in the, the feelers. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I'm awesome like, crowd as well, acknowledging it and yes. the crowd cheering for him. Yes, poor guy. He's like, I could. I had to keep it out of my head for this fight, but now that this fight's over, like, this is the only thing I can think about. Rightfully so. Oh, super emotional. Good for him. Oh, I hope that, you know, honored his brother, but I hope going forward he can deal with the grief and he still has more to show us. So, Niger coming out with a big contingency. Oh, yeah, after Usman, too. Yeah. So the guys out coming there. out of, they aren't the um, Cameroon guys. Don't try to. <laughs> Another Nigerian fighter that you tend to think of an uh, Australian fighter is Real Adesanya. True, true. He's Just a broken native. Just saying. And he, he makes mention of that. So we move on to the set, 170 pounders, where here that be, feel like we had spot on. Anthony Rocco Martin defeating Jake Matthews, which officially, can you call him Rocco Martin? Now that he gave the, because he heard it all week, where in his post-fight presser, he even said, uh, this is why I I changed my name from Tony Martin to Rocco, which I could go with just calling him Rocco. I didn't hear it, tell me. So he was saying that uh, his mother was going to name him, I believe other family mem- members' names, which was Rocco Martin, but she thought that he would get in too many fights as a little kid, so she did not name him Rocco. 
Oh. Funny, right? That's a good one. So now it he's on her. Didn't matter. He was meant to be. Exactly. But she knew. How did she know that she was going to have a little fighter? Did you see the little commercial? Uh, moms know. Moms do already know. Because some people have. Did you see the. I forget what it was for, but it was kind of like making a joke. It was like a sex commercial, but it had Matthews and Pedro and Ty in it. And they were in bed and they were like, oh, you know, it's all broken down. Like if they were talking about a fight, but really they're talking about sex. I did not. No, I it's missed really, it. Everybody should look it up. I don't even want to try to do it. It'll be, <laughs> but it's like them and their girlfriends are just, you know, or Maybe somebody we'll repost it on with. Twitter. Uh-huh. Yeah. And uh, they're laying in bed and they're talking about the fight. Like, I really thought I took control from the bottom and the girls like sitting next to him like. <laughs> you know, like, I and, have and to they're watch all that. doing That's it, and it's fun. really funny, so That's I think fun, everybody fun. should. So, back to the fight. This ended up being a submission in round number three. Felt like, again, we It had made this... me like Jake Matthews, and it made me put him on a couple of cards, purely from the commercial. Oh, wow. I stayed away from Matthews. I feel like, as we were saying, he's a front runner. Once things start to fall apart in his fights, and he gets a little bit of opposition, he tends to crumble a bit. He didn't crumble here. He went night-night, anaconda choke. He was out. The ref grabbed his arm, yeah. and it was Limp City. Yeah. Um, Rocco looked good in there all the way around. The whole time. The, all the entire fight, Matthews also looked good in there. The thing that I got to say about Rocco that I hated the most was that pubes on his face were trash. Well, if that's the thing that you hated the most, he's uh, one to watch uh, going forward as a sneaky MF underdog. You saw that bet that I placed on him. I didn't make it a free bet, but I had Rocco in the third round cashing at plus 1,600. I know it's a late brag, but... Uh, I had Rocco in this fight everywhere. He's the guy who got me up in that top three position on the DraftKings lines. So, didn't get that first place. But, hey, third place, I'll live with it. I'll live with it. Moving forward, I like them both. I don't think either. I don't think they looked horrible either way. Uh, Rocco, moving forward, he still has a shot, and he's making his run at the 170 division. Jake Matthews stays where he's at, and he's going to be where he's at for, I think this is Jake Matthews. He's peak Jake Ma- Ma- Matthews, like peak oil or peak diamonds. Peak J, this is his, the height of his career. We don't see him crawl any further in the division. Interesting. I think they're still both young enough to be around for a little while. Um, fun fights ahead of for both of them. Yeah, regardless. I agree. I agree. I don't really care about belts and all that. Fun yeah, fights for fun both fights. going forward. Then we go to Justin Willis defeating Mark Hunt in a three-round decision. And there was a bit of fireworks at the weigh-in. Mark Hunt stepping out and uh getting all up in mark hunt's face being disrespectful and you know the kfc king don't put up with nothing nothing i didn't see any of that either i couldn't I, it was there was so much fight shit yeah. that i i avoided Ooh. the i didn't see these weigh-ins i saw i looked at pictures on instagram of the weigh-ins right. but i didn't watch any of the video but it, it was too it was like i, I think i was tyson fury wilder weigh-ins so this did point. this officially start the tyson fury wilder fight was it? It was in these fights. It was right around here. It was right, and this where it was hard, where I wasn't able to tweet because I had to use my phone as one and not the other. Um, guess we just break down Wilder Tyson real quick because there's not much to say about the Mark before Hunt we get in the last three fights. Well, actually, I did switch to Justin Willis. Um, Good call. It all it all started to make sense to me, like wrestling wise, and I thought there's really no difference of what's gonna happen with Willis at, that happened with Curtis Blades, and I switched to Willis at the last moment. Um, Mark Hunt's walk in was fucking amazing. Agreed. Uh, super Loved fun. It. I liked how they owned all that, but maybe Mark Hunt's retirement kind of should have happened maybe last fight or the fight before. I could see and that too. it kind of took all the thunder out of the room for the other boys or something happened. Energy wise for the hometown guys, it was not there. Well, these are the three fighters that train together, live together, yep. are brothers, and just nonstop. Willis used a striking game, actually, very limited wrestling, picked them apart and just pivoted, turned away. Mark Hunt didn't cut off the cage, followed him in a just pretty much not to say he gave it up. But Mark Hunt didn't look like he used to in there, and it's time to go, yeah. like you're saying. And um, Justin Willis has super fast hands, super oh, yeah. fast hands, and Mark Hunt couldn't keep up. But co main and main, we can save. Let's just do just the a little Fury Wilder. Wilder. Fury travesty. This is why boxing's dying. This is why I didn't care about any prior fight to Wilder Tyson. Tyson Fury has come back. I had so much money on Fury. 
minus almost three to one underdog and ended up piecing apart Wilder the entire time. Maybe lost the third or fourth round and it's all that last round, right? That's I'm going to be really honest out. with you. Yes. In my opinion... I rewatched most of it, and I tried to. I was doing other stuff while I rewatched it. Right. I felt like ten of those rounds, maybe nine, Tyson won. I would say. Like. That's what I'm so saying. So many other rounds. The last round, and maybe so the second many. round, Wilder won. But that was it. That was it. Um, that was it. I do think that... Uh, it was like a magic trick. You know when um, gay guys fall, they like have this thing they do on stage where they put their leg behind and they fall all the way flat and they're like, ah! Do they call it a death drop? Yes, exactly. <laughs> um, that death drop that Tyson Fury did. <laughs> Damn. Can and I never round? saw somebody get back up and his legs were under him. That was The Undertaker. That I, was a straight that was up exactly. Undertaker. Exactly. He just sat mm-hmm. up. At the six count, because I counted. For that five count, out. His eyes, glossy. Then he moves his mouthpiece at six and sits up like The Undertaker. Didn't and as you're up. saying, isn't bambi which you would expect. Yeah, he He'd get, be doesn't all have bambi- wobbly legs at all. He just gets up like, motherfucker. He almost looks like, like, I'm like, did he just lay there? And he's like, this motherfucker just knocked me down. And then just gets up. Like, it, like did he just shut his eyes and think, he just knocked me down. I just got knocked down for the first time in my whole fucking career. And it was a hell of a knockdown. A lot of people wouldn't have got up from that. Because if you look back at those that two punches, hit. it was a right with a left hook that just flattened him. Straight, it looked like a cartoon. And Wilder, unreal. my favorite, is somebody put the picture of the draw. Did you see when, no, it, when no. the announcer announces the draw? No, I did not. Wilder smiling. And Tyson Fury's pissed. And you that's how you know that Tyson Fury knows that was like, it was a some... Freak. This is some. It was a fix, even though on the mic. G bullshit. Even though on the mic, Fury was like, "Whatever," because he still got paid for it. Um, what I liked was what I saw. People were posting Wilder uh, shimmying after the knockdown, expecting it being a knockout because he connected. And then when Fury gets up like the Undertaker, how his face changed, how his face just deadpan, and he's like, "Ah, oh, crap." Tyson got up and actually won the rest of that round. Tyson got up and came oh, after yeah. him, killed it, it killed was it. Was awesome. But the cards were, Tyson Fury, I think, was like 116 to whatever. But then somebody had Wilder at 115. Yeah, it's The bullshit. other way, which is wrong. And then the other guy had it a draw, which is bullshit as well. Can you, the draw makes no sense at all. And a little out of sequence, but god damn, did Tyson Fury look sexy in there. His body, I like the full <laughs> shave. I like the way he oh, looks in the face. he's too big of a man for me. I thought he looked so good. Compared to the normal schlub of himself with the beard that I had seen on videos like just a year ago. Yeah. That gosh, dude, he looks so good. And for both guys, I actually think I'm making a prediction. It's gonna. I think Tyson Fury will put his name on the bottom line a lot sooner than we see Wilder put his name on the bottom line. It's gonna take Wilder a lot longer to get back in the octagon. The other thing, I, I think, or inside the ring. <laughs> yeah, yeah, totally. I think it stifles Anthony Joshua a little bit because it's the big. It, I really thought about it. I had not been that excited about a fight and I couldn't believe I was sitting at my house alone but then I hadn't heard anyone else talk about it but I hadn't brought it up to anyone and I was thinking I haven't been this excited about a fight since a tight a real Tyson oh, wait, fight a boxing match specifically a bi- boxing fight yes exactly I haven't been this excited about that wasn't even Mayweather McGregor like a heavyweight fight right. I haven't been this excited Agreed. about a heavyweight fight since Mike Tyson fought last it was week. profile it was fun the workups were fun did you know Tyson Fury was named after Mike Tyson I did not know that isn't that cute? That's fun. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. How long we have come. But immediate rematch obviously is coming. Either of yes. those fighters don't fight anyone but each other now, which is what they did with Canelo Golovkin. It's and it's exactly. Just, that's why I said this is some triple G bullshit. Uh, it was some bullshit. I had money on Fury. There was no way that was a draw. No freaking way. But no. that's where, you know, people who knew, they Unless had money the on the draw. Unless the knockdown somebody 10... Well, I don't, it, it doesn't yeah, matter. Yeah, it doesn't matter. There was enough rounds that would have 12 been, rounds and yeah. Tyson won 10 of yeah. those rounds? It's crazy. Getting back to but isn't UFC. isn't that so exciting? Tyson Fury is the best and I like his personality yep. and people watched him in the after um, thing he got the whole entire um, did he get them all to sing I didn't hear it he got the whole entire Sweet Carolina probably uh, was it Sweet Caroline uh uh-uh. uh I don't think so 
something though he got the whole entire press corps to oh. sing along and everybody that i see like i'm a fan of tyson fury he's my new favorite fighter he's my new favorite fighter and just watching everyone because if you are a fan of us you know we love tyson fury here so it's right. just like but everyone's you, getting to love him and how do you feel about dlt wilder i'm not a fan I'm not either. I like Anthony Joshua better. I, I want to see Anthony Joshua fight Tyson Fury. I agree with that, but like, we know what's going to happen there. What? Fury's going to end that decision if he doesn't get a draw. Bullshit I think so, too, because I love Tyson Fury. <laughs> anyway, so let's go back, back to Adelaide. We go with a devastating, devastating finish. Mauricio Shogun, who are coming in as a humongous underdog and defeating Tyson Pedro. I actually hedged my bets here. Even though I was saying here, I really want to play Hua, I can't because at this point in his career, and I don't like Pedro, and this is the fight that we said, they're going to say, Pedro's back, and then he's going to get starched his next fight because Hua's so gone. Nope, Hua's apparently not as gone. I and know, and could this fight have been called in the first round? We've seen that from Hua so much that I could say... He was knocked out two or three times. But that's him, and I don't like it, and I don't want to see it, and I wouldn't have felt bad if Fury would have got... Not Fury, if uh, Pedro would have got that finish in the first round, but it's and better. And Hua was going to retire, and now he's back. Oh, no more back talk. <laughs> I don't want any of this more back. <laughs> it's just... Oh, man. But what a, for lack of better terms, fraud that Tyson Pedro is. Tyson Pedro cannot beat a good guy in there. He can run over chumps, but OSP, yeah, I'm sorry. It's And I didn't come up with that. I got to give credit to who are the guys. I can't think of it. You're uh, best of the fraud. fraud. But fraud it is. Tyson Pedro. But it is. It's He's true. Picky. He's, when he we go to Australia, we were just talking about how when we go to Australia on a visit. I'm fraud. sorry. Fraud. I'm, he gets submitted by OSP. You get finished by Shogun. What does OSP point? do to people? Knock them out and submit, submit them. them. And submit them. Submit them. Uh. And then Shogun Hua. Is, <laughs> I felt like the first round he blew his wad because it was almost a finished round. When did he blow his ankle? I didn't see that. I was holding he on. He stepped back and something did else happen. But, he, he said stepped he back it. and something weird happened. And he went right down. And then he sat on the cage because he fell from stepping backward and hurting his ankle. And he just kind of had to sit there. He had nothing. So he just blocked himself and he took a punch right to the face. Yeah. It was kind of not uh if he stepped back and broke his ankle or if he kicked and broke his ankle, then he also had some nice kicks in there. I don't think he's a fraud. I'm excited about Tyson Pedro going forward. Something happened that cost him the fight, if, especially if he broke his ankle and then Hua coming at you with like a friggin' uppercut right while you're sitting yeah. down, he lifted him off of his rumple. I guess maybe uh, I know fraud's a harsh word, but But I do like Tyson Pedro unnecessarily. What like I feel- a lot. What I feel like is happening here is the same as Jake Matthews. If Tyson Pedro steamrolls you, he steamrolls you. If you give him any resistance, things start to fall apart for him. And I feel like this could have, this might have been one. Again, both of these guys eat me alive for breakfast, and they're beasts, and I can never yeah, do what they're yeah, doing. Yeah. But <laughs> he's just he burned me once, can't burn me again. You fooled me once, can't fool me twice. And he's fooled me like seven times. So. But didn't you pick Hua on the podcast? No. I said paid, I said I like Hua here. It's just because he's too old and chinny that Pedro's not a good striker. And on the ground, I think Hua beats him. But it's just because of this point. So I picked Hua on my DraftKings. I split these guys because I thought it was going to be a finish either way in the first. So this Hua's though, he's the guy who got me that third spot on my cash game or on all my cards. It was Shogun Hua, for wow. sure. Wow. For that sure, was for a sure. good play. Then we move on to the main event with Junior Dos Santos versus Tai Tuivasa. Because I said either all the Australians are going to win or none of them, and I played with the Australians. So all of a sudden, <laughs> my night was like, Meh. Like when you hear that sound in the airplane, like this isn't right. Meh. I do feel like Lesbo was spot on with that, and I actually played a few cards with none of the Australians. I that is the only way I even have money left on my DraftKings is because I played two cards that happen to be kind of pricey um with no Australians on them at all. And it worked out <laughs> because they got finished a lot of the time. And I even when I was doing it I thought 
no Australian? Should I just play? And I was like, nope, let me just. <laughs> it's a good call. Trust, trust your gut. And Willis ended up being a really good play. He was right out of all the fighters. He was right with his value. They were like, he's worth about 90 points and he got about 90 points. And so for the price, I thought he was a good bet of the night to like be able to afford guys on both sides of him. Definitely. So Junior Dos Santos, I had going into a decision. I had all sorts of plays, cash plays. But and Ua, plays. way better than Willis. Way better. <laughs> way better. But, um... What do we see here with Tai Tuivasa? One of these guys as well that, like Tyson Pedro, once things start, once he sees a little bit of opposition, once he's not the front runner, things start to fall apart. I mean, he got eaten up striking wise, but that's also a huge I step up in competition. I d- disagree huge again. Huge step up. I felt like um, Tai Tuivasa, the exact same as um, Tyson Pedro, had the whole first round, killed it murked he was better on he had good hands he was chasing him around not like in the brunson way of chasing him around the (laughs) octagon but he had good leg kicks he killed it with leg kicks that's what we we even forgot to talk about with uh in jake matthews that's what it's the leg kicks that took him apart and i felt like um both guys both uh tyson pedro and taya tuavasa had good leg kicks in their fights i felt like taya tuavasa had way better hands he totally was handling dos años until dos años got a good did he get almost a head kick he blocked something it was a three-punch combination and he clipped them with a right, I believe, but then the left, the second Before left, he, put he him on the ground. Before he punched him with something, he like kicked him, okay. and he put his arm up, and Taya Tuivasa acknowledged it. He acknowledged it to uh, Dos, Santos. Dos Santos, like, oh, that was a, okay, you got me. Right when he acknowledged it, and he like shut his eyes to do the, doesn't, took t- total advantage, three punch combination. Better move. And he beat Ty around like... It was unbelievable. Ragged it looked like him. a hacky sack. Yeah, ragdolled him. Yeah, around. it was unbelievable. He definitely unbelievable. did. Unbelievable. But I think that's just also where Ty took, this is by far the biggest step up in competition that he had taken in a long time, and a lot of people were fading Dos Santos's chin. I also think Ty Tuvasa has gas tank issues, which we didn't really see, but uh, moving forward, I think Ty beats a lot of other heavyweights. I'm not I off like the Ty. Ty I think wagon. he could even beat Dos Santos if they fought again. I Do you think the fight was stopped early? No, I think it was right. You think it was right? But I also had Dos Santos. Dos oh, Santos and none of those. Everywhere. I also everywhere. felt like a lot everywhere. of everywhere. those punches didn't land toward the. That was similar, where a lot of them didn't land, and maybe it was stopped a little prematurely. Um, I don't know. I don't know. And I also like Willis going back. I know this is out of order. I like how he was like, I don't have anything to fucking say. Let's let Mark Hunt have the microphone. I love that too. Loved I love it, that especially because awesome. it was retirement. Classy, even after all the bullshit. But this is one of the in- interesting times where Junior DeSantos did a bit of the same thing. Let Ty have the mic. And Ty immediately was like, hey, you punk ass Willis. I'm coming after you, boy. That was my Scottish accent. What do you like? <laughs> but what do you like about that? Do you like that fight all right? Nope. I don't like that fight at all because Willis is coming off of a win and Ty's coming off of a loss. Like, it doesn't make sense. But because there's heat now, it's probably going to happen. And, and I'm main event, Willis wins. you're still punching backward if yeah. you're coming off the main event. It's that's weird. Something. But even off of a loss, to have a call out like that, even though it makes sense, I think it's going to happen because it does make sense because there was this bad blood. But I. Say, I got Willis in that fight. Ooh, I got Ty. Ooh. I don't know. I like both. That's a weird fight for me to pick. <laughs> Even though I can't pick it, that means it should probably happen. There it is. There it is. So, we, you know what we have coming up? Oh, bring it to me. Because I've been looking at tape. I've been having to take showers at night. I'll it's... start with our girl, Shevchenko versus Joanna. <laughs> and what's the main event of that card? I don't even know. Um, Just as good looking. Max Holloway, Brian Ortega. Ah, there's going to be babies are going to be getting made that weekend, all weekend long. Good thing is getting pregnant. And I was just about to say. getting pregnant. <laughs> just about to say. So make sure you're liking and subscribing because we just flew all the way and we haven't even asked you to like and subscribe one time. So, yeah, that's it. Uh, we're into December. We're doing it. We got another heavy show coming up Wednesday. Heavy do the breakdown. Thank yeah, you. I'm so excited. So thanks for listening. Thanks for the me. Thanks for listening to Let Be. For all things Lesbo and the Bean, head over to lesboandthebean.com or follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter.